Worldwide, photovoltaics are on the rise. The globally installed PV capacity grew from 44 gigawatts in 2010 to 651 gigawatts by the end of 2019. During that same period, prices dropped globally from 38 cents per kilowatt hour to 7 cents. In 2019, more than two-thirds of the newly installed power generation worldwide was wind or solar based. And in many regions of the world, PV has become the cheapest technology for electricity production, and its success story is still continuing to unfold. It's easy to see how solar photovoltaics have become so wildly successful. Using the sun's energy as opposed to fossil fuels for electricity generation means a direct reduction in carbon emissions for industry and consumers. Solar PV installations are relatively simple, can be installed on a range of surfaces in different conditions, and are modular, meaning that system sizes can be easily adjusted depending on the need. PV systems can also preserve biodiversity on lands that might otherwise be run down through agricultural production. Similarly, land use for solar energy generation does not result in soil degradation, and with falling costs, solar has become one of the most attractive energy sources. However, the further and increased use of PV does present some challenges. Opting for PV installations can mean that developers have to choose between using land to produce energy or for other purposes, such as agriculture, housing, and more. Further, there are gaps in the technology, such as how to maximize the absorption rate of sunlight in each solar cell. And then there's the issue that land, once populated with solar panels, becomes sealed for a period of time. Despite these challenges, solar PV will play an integral part in ramping up renewables and decarbonizing the energy system. Dr. Benedict Ortman is the global head of solar projects at Baywa RE. Based in Munich, Germany, the company is working to drive further expansion of renewables, including innovative approaches to PV. Photovoltaics right now is already the cheapest source of energy uh, in the world, of mankind, so to say. And um, the reason for this is that the panels have been getting so cheap in the last 10 years that we now are on so-called grid parity with the production costs of photovoltaic solar. Well, in order to make 100% renewable energy, we need literally three things. We need more generation. We need more space to build our plants. Secondly, we need a smarter grid, which will be able to cope with the fluctuation of the renewable production, which also means that we need much more storage in the grid. And number three is we need to work on local acceptance. People are starting to oppose renewable energies because they don't want to have it in their backyard. Solving these challenges is essential to securing the continued growth of renewable energy production around the world. Current research findings suggest that integrated PV could hold many of the solutions. Fraunhofer Institute in Freiburg, Germany undertakes research and development of integrated photovoltaics. Dr. Harry Wirth is the director of the division Photovoltaics Modules and Power Plants at Fraunhofer. We have seen in our calculations that we may need around 500 gigawatts of photovoltaics installed to have completed the energy transition, which means that that's a factor of 10 from today's installed capacity. And for that, it is obvious that we need ideas, new ideas, from where these areas will come. And one very important idea is to have dual use of areas, meaning that areas that have once been used, maybe for coal mining, are still used for agriculture, have been already built, to use these areas twice. Mm -hmm. We call that um, integrated photovoltaics. And uh, not only that it is land neutral, but it is also um, giving um, access to synergy potentials. For example, by agriculture, it is possible to combine PV electricity production on top and uh, crop production on the ground. And um, this not only uses land twice, but it generates synergies because we have seen agriculture suffering 
from uh, climate change. We have seen uh, high temperatures, we have seen little rain impacts and um, for that shading can support uh, certain crops and actually raise um, the productivity of the ground. Uh, other places for uh, integration are uh, former lignite uh, open mining areas which are now flooded and which can be used for the so-called floating PV. We also think about integrating PV um, into the envelope of cars, into the envelope of trucks, into uh, noise barriers, even into covering roads. And this integrated PV uh, does not cost us additional land. We don't need only like ground mounted, we need floating solar, we need agri-solar, we also need, of course, rooftops, we need facades, BIPV, so building integrated PV. All kinds of applications would be welcomed in order to make energy transition really working. Research by Baiwa, RE and others shows that integrated PV can address many of the issues facing current solar technology. So there is advantages when you compare a floating solar plant with a ground-mounted plant because as the panels are floating above the water, they are getting a cooling effect by the water which is improving actually the efficiency of the generator. And as we are using east-west orientation instead of only south orientation, we save space. So the generator on water is more compact than the one on land. These are uh, advantages which we already saw uh, when we are using, um, when we are applying floating solar projects. Another for, uh, advantage is that um, evaporation of water is less so we reduce the evaporation, which is important for water reservoirs uh, or hydro dams, etc. And for agri-PV also we have uh, quite some advantages for the farmer, as when he was using plastic foils in the past, he now has a kind of a glass and steel construction, which is much more robust towards winds and hail. So the operation cost and the maintenance cost for the farmer are much less. We also saw that when you have a kind of a foil tunnel, the temperature and the humidity beneath the tunnel is very high, which is not so good for the fruit production. So it's even better to have only solar on uh, above the plants rather than having it all covered with a, with a plastic foil. While integrated PV has incredibly promising advantages for farmers and financing, Researchers are still working to deepen their understanding of how to best pair the technology with specialized environments. So we are looking into different ways of application, different uh, potentials for use, uh, which crops may be the best fit for PV, uh, what is the um, interaction between the PV and the, the water body and so on. After that, uh, we need to improve and specialize products. Uh, for now, we have seen um, uh, quite standard uh, PV module products that are imported in large amounts from Asia. For the integration, we may need more specialized products. We need more specialized um, mounting structures for agri-PV that, uh, of course, enables um, the farmer to work on his land and that um, not only optimizes the electric yield, but optimizes both the electric yield and the crop yield from the land. So we need this product development and of course we need to, to model and understand how this yield depends on the various parameters. So it's an entirely new world uh, that we have to, to understand and uh, to co-optimize. The success of solar PV as a major contributor to the renewable energy transition is sure to continue for years to come. And developments in the field of integrated PV provide strong potential solutions for even greater renewable expansion. Integrated PV represents an opportunity to maximize energy production by building PV panels into our environment without foregoing other necessary functions. The establishment of solar installations that serve dual purposes can protect buildings, land, and food production from the impacts of climate change. Integrated PV offers a promising look at the next evolution of renewable energy production.